الحمد لله الحمد لله خالق الوجود من العدم وجاعل النور من الظلم ومخرج الصبر من الألم وملق التوبة على الندم فنشكره على المصائب كما نشكره على النعم ونصلي على رسوله الأكرم بالشرف الأتم والنور الأتم والكتاب المحكم وكمال النبيين والخاتم سيد ولد آدم الذي بشر به عيسى بن مريم ودعا لبعثته إبراهيم عليه السلام حين كان يرفع قواعد بيت الله المحرم فصلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى أتباعه خير الأمم الذين بارك الله بهم كافة الناس العرب منهم والعجم الحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا والحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عمجا والحمد لله الذي نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ به من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله أصله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا ثم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يقول سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اللهم اجعلنا من الفائزين رب الشح لصدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي واللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا إله إلا الله واللهم اجعلنا من الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر أمين يا رب العالمين In today's book I'd like to share with you just some lessons from some of the concluding ayat of Surah Al-Ahzab And Surah Al-Ahzab for those of you who don't know include many subjects but one of the things that ties all of the subjects of Surah Al-Ahzab together is actually sharp language. There were scandals that were attempted to be raised in the private life of the Prophet Sallallahu in his marital life. And that's, that issue is addressed in Surah Al-Ahzab. Then in Surah Al-Ahzab, when the believers are completely surrounded, the battle of the trenches, the Muslims are completely surrounded, and they're about to be killed, the munafiqoon on the inside they basically started saying some very terrible things and Allah actually uses the term that they use metal tongues, like their tongues are like scissors. They say things that hurt so much, it would cut. Like the Arabic saying says, Sometimes you say things that hurts more than even a beating would hurt. So they were saying mean and terrible and hurtful things that would destroy the morale of the Muslims. And at the end of this surah, Allah Azza wa gives one of those advices that ties all of those problems together in a statement that the Prophet ﷺ used to repeat often in the Maslum khutbah. It would begin the khutbah, there are some ayat that Rasulullah ﷺ used to love to repeat from the Qur'an. And this is one of those ayat. Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullaha wa qulu qawlan salida. That's an ayah by itself. Even though, it's interesting, even though from a grammatical perspective, the next ayah is part of the same sentence. Because you know in English or in any other language, there are conditional sentences. You have the if, and then you have the then. If you do this, then this will happen. And that's an entire sentence. Right? If I eat healthy, then I will feel better. That's one sentence, it's not two sentences. It's been combined because it's a conditional statement. It is that this ayah, this ayah is also what's called talab and jawab talab. It's actually two statements. One is what you should do, and if you do, what will happen as a result? These go hand in hand. But Allah separated them as two 
separate ayat. And this is the principle in the Quran when he says, ayatihi. So, you, so people reflect deeply into every one of his ayat. That Allah separated them for a reason. And we're going to try to explore some of those reasons today, inshaAllah ta'ala, among other things. So I want to begin with a brief translation. Ya ayyuhalladina amanu. Those of you who have claimed to believe, this instruction that Allah is about to give applies specifically to the people of Iman. But the thing to note here is that this surah is madaniya. This surah came when the Prophet had already, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, migrated to Medina. And of course, when Allah's Messenger has migrated to Medina, when the Qur'an comes down, it is obviously talking to the Muslims. When Allah is giving a command in the Qur'an, it is obviously a command being given to the Muslims. There's no confusion about that. So why, even though everybody already knows that this is for the Muslims, why say, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu? You could just say, Sadina. We would still know that it's about us. You would just say, Half taqwa of Allah. If Allah says, Half taqwa of Allah, obviously we know He's talking to us. So why first say, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu? This, this structure, those of you who believe, those of you who have come to believe, this adatul nida that's used in the beginning to call somebody, grammatically speaking, they say, La mahalla lahu fil i'rab. There's no place in grammar for it. The sentence actually begins with Ittaqullah. But why is it there? Let me make it simple for you. When you call someone, if you say, hey, boy, come here. When you say that, the hey, boy part of your sentence is actually not a sentence. That's not a sentence. The only sentence is come here. That's the only sentence. The only reason you said, hey, boy, is to get his attention. Is to get his attention. Now, if you want to make him feel small, you call him, hey boy. If you want to make him feel respected, you'll say, hey, Abdul Karim, come here. If you want to make him feel loved, you'll say, hey, my son, come here. You understand? Depending on how you call him, how you get his attention is what you want him to think about. Because you got his attention using certain kinds of words. When Allah Azza wa Jal gets your attention, and he says, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, when he gets my attention. Those of you who have accepted Iman, those of you that have come into the faith, that Allah Azza wa is saying that before I give you any instructions, understand that this instruction is special for you because you have the gift of Iman. You have the gift of faith. Every time you read Ya ayyuhalladina amanu in the Quran, this is for tanbih, this is for you to pay attention to the fact that whatever Allah is going to say to you right now is only possible for you because you have the gift of Iman. Now the opposite is also true. If what is about to be said, you don't find it in your life, then the problem is you are being called someone who should have Iman, but maybe there's something missing in your Iman and there's something missing in my Iman. May Allah not make us from those people. So he says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu taqullah. Those of you who have Iman have taqwa of Allah. Be cautious of Allah. Be careful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah. Be protect yourself from making Allah upset, from disappointing Allah. It's a very powerful word, the taqwa of Allah. And you know it's used over 200 times in the book of Allah. But you know what? The taqwa of Allah is in many things. When somebody is praying salah on time, that is also the taqwa of Allah. When somebody is lowering their eyes and they don't look at something shameless, that's also the taqwa of Allah. When somebody is being kind to their parents, that's also the taqwa of Allah. When somebody is being honest in their business, that's also the taqwa of Allah. The taqwa of Allah is basically found in everything that a believer does. It's comprehensive. But of all the things that taqwa includes, what Allah does, He goes from the entire picture of taqwa, and He highlights some things that are special within the, within the sky within this entire spectrum of taqwa, some things are very, very important. So he'll make a atuf and specify them. So he says, اِتَّقُوا wa وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا sadida." Have taqwa of Allah. And one of the most powerful demonstrations, one of the most powerful proofs that you actually have the taqwa of Allah is that you, that you should say قَوْلًا sadida." You should speak. Now here's the tough part. This is where the tough part of taqwa begins. You should speak qawlan sadida, which you can translate as speak for straightforward speech. Speak upright speech. Your taqwa is going to be proven in the way you speak. In these ayat, 
the instruction is, if you have Iman, you have Taqwa. And if you have Taqwa, it should affect the way in which you speak directly. And this is one of the most fundamental, primary ways in which you can prove to yourself. And you hope to prove to Allah that you carry this thing. This thing that is of more value than anything else. And that is the Taqwa of Allah in your heart and the Taqwa of Allah in my heart. Because at the end of the day, when we go before Allah on Judgment Day, nothing else is of any benefit. You know, no money, no children are going to be any good on that day. The only thing that will matter is whether we have a heart with taqwa or not. And today in this khutbah we're learning that taqwa is directly tied to how you speak. But the problem is, Allah did not say who do you speak to. How you speak to your teachers, how you speak to your parents, how you speak to your children, how you speak to your friends, how you speak to your employees, how do you speak to your employers, how do you speak to your neighbor, how do you speak to someone next to you on the road when you're walking, or when you're taking a bus, or when you're in traffic and somebody cuts you off and they roll their window, how do you speak to them? How do you speak to it? Allah did not specify. You know what that means? Any time you speak, you have to have certain guiding principles, certain qualities in your speech. And those are the guiding principles that are being taught in this remarkable, remarkable ayah. He says, Qulu qawlan sadida. Here is what your qawl, your speech, the quality it should have, is it should be speech that is sadid. The word you use in the Arabic language is sadid. And a rough translation means straightforward. But we're going to dig deeper, inshaAllah ta'ala. As-saddu ikhlaqul ikhlaqul khalad. Wa'adnu thalab. They say in Arabic, sadd is actually when you fill in the gaps. Like, you know if you have a wall and it's got a crack? And if you don't fix the crack, what's going to happen? The crack is going to get bigger, right? So you want to fix that so you fill it quickly. So it doesn't become a bigger problem, okay? So when you fill in a crack, that's actually called sad. You have to give, when you talk, you have to speak in a way that prevents future problems from happening. You have to, I'll say that again, you have to speak in a way that prevents future problems from happening. And you don't speak in a way that will create problems in the future. You have to think about the future now when you speak. That's part of Qawla and Sadi, part of being cautious. You know, there's a way of saying something, that's the same thing. You can say the same thing, and you can say it in different ways. And one way you say it, it will prevent future problems. And another way you say it, it will create many future problems. Same thing though. It's the same exact thing. If somebody does something wrong, if my wife did something wrong, if my children did something wrong, if my wife put too much salt or too little salt in the food, there's different ways I can say it. I could say, this food is delicious. Oh man, it already reminds me of Jannah. Let me see if I try more, some more salt, it might become Jannah to You know, That's one way of saying it. Another way of saying it is, woman, what is wrong with you? Why do you always put salt? Do you don't put any salt in the food? You know? Why do you hate me so much? You never, why can't you cook properly? Why can't you cook like my mother? When you talk like that, you watch out. You, there might be poison in your next meal. So just be careful. You will create future problems. You're creating feelings in somebody's heart that are going to mess things up in the future. Correcting someone is one thing, but the way you correct them is something else. Don't create future problems. Other part of that is, you know, your office communications, or your communications between friends, your text messaging, or you're sending an email. When you send an email, and you say something, sometimes you can read the email, and you can understand it one way or the other way. You know? You can stop, you can say, you know, uh, stop, don't go, or don't stop, go. What does that mean? If you say don't, don't, stop, you know, then it means to stop. But if you say don't go, don't go. Or somebody says don't just go. <laughs> People are confused, what do you mean? You want me to stop or you want me to go? What do you want? You have to speak in a way people understand you perfectly and there's no room for confusion. <coughs> there's no room for confusion. Sometimes we talk to people and they understand one thing and then you go see the work and they did something the exact opposite. I thought that's what you said. Well, you didn't speak Qawl Sadeed. 
that it creates problems in business. It creates problems in class. It creates problems between teacher and student. It creates problems between husband and wife. You have to have clear, clear speech that you anticipate this might be misunderstood in this way. So let me try to make sure I speak in a way that it won't be misunderstood. The second thing, they say, Asad al Jabal, Amit Hajiz. The sub could also be a barrier. The sub can also be a barrier. You should speak in a way that prevents trouble. You can see a problem is coming. If you open your mouth, it won't happen. Sometimes you see a problem is coming and you don't say anything. And then it happens, you say, I knew it was going to happen. I should have said something. No, no, no. If you know that something's going to happen, somebody looks angry and they're going to do something bad, then you speak. Bro, you look angry, I think you're going to do something bad. You might say something you regret later. Don't, don't make the call right now. You're sitting with your friends, one of your friends get angry. Hold on, let me call them right now. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. You don't sit quiet. You speak in a way that prevents evil from happening. This is within the, the framework of al qawla al-Sadeed. Then, Going further within Qawla Sadeed, a sidad min al aish ma tusabu bihi al so beautiful. Speech, a sidad, a sidad is also used for what fulfills a need. What fulfills a need. People need to hear things from you. Your children need to hear from you that you are proud of them, that you love them, that you forgive them. You don't just assume, oh, they know, they know. You ever tell your boy you love him? Yeah, no, he know, of course I love him. Yes, I know, of course you love him, but did you tell him that you love him? No, 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 you don't talk like that. They might get go crazy if you talk like that. You know? So I don't talk, no, no, sometimes people need to hear these words. They need to hear these words. I have seen 30-year-old men cry to their fathers, you never once said that you're proud of me. And the father says, I was always proud of you. And the son says, why didn't you say anything? This is also part of Sadiq. Things that should be said, you should say them. It, people need these words. People need these words. Rasulullah used to acknowledge the good qualities of the Sahaba. He used to acknowledge them because it needs to be said. Something needs to be said. They have a need. And it's not just the good. Sometimes you have to say something that somebody is doing wrong. And sometimes it's very difficult. Sometimes your mother is doing something wrong. Sometimes your father is doing something wrong. Sometimes your father is involved in a haram business. Sometimes your mother is doing a lot of backbiting. They're not angels. We love them. They are our parents. We want to we want to earn jannah by serving them. But sometimes they're doing something wrong. You have to be able to speak so you can keep them from disobeying Allah. You have to speak with humility. You have to speak with respect. But you can't stay quiet and say, that's my mother, I can't say anything. That's my father, I can't say anything. No, no, no. You have to prevent them with your words. You have to try to stop them. With love, with respect. But you still have to do it. It's difficult. This is part of Qawl and To speak what people need to hear. If it's good that they need to hear. Or even if it's criticism in the most loving way. In a way that will actually fulfill the need. Not make them more angry towards you. That you must speak out. Then, just a couple more. Within the words Qawl and Sadida, Sadaat Kadalik and Isaba, to speak correctly. Sometimes we tell people what they want to hear. There's a big problem. We tell people what they want to hear, and we're not honest with them. Brother, how are you? I'm good. Afi, are you upset about anything? No, 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 I'm fine. I'm fine. You're not fine. You're upset with this brother. He said something that bothered you, but when he asked you, are you okay, are you upset with me? No, 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 it's okay, it's okay. When he asked you, you don't say it. And then when you go with your friends, man, I don't like that guy, you know what he did to me? And you run your mouth about him. You have a chance to speak clearly, openly, and say, this is what I find wrong. This is what you said and it hurt my feelings. And I wish you didn't say that. Because I like you, I respect you, but it really hurt my feelings when you said that. I really didn't like when you did this. Be clear. Be clear. And what, why are we not clear? We say it might hurt somebody's feelings. Let me tell you, when you are not open, and we are, when you are not honest, 
When you don't have isaba in your tone, when you don't have sadad in your tone, you don't speak clearly and directly to people and honestly with people, then that creates bigger problems. If you don't like a brother, you have a problem with this brother, and he says, Assalamu alaikum to you. And you say, Wa alaikum as salam to him. And you don't tell him that you have something in your heart against him. Then your Wa alaikum as salam is a lie. Because Wa alaikum as salam means that you are offering him peace. But there's no peace in your heart. You have to solve this problem. The Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would advise us that we should not stay away from a brother more than the span of three days without saying salam, which means not only salam and you hang up, and you hang up, but the fact that you say assalamu alaikum, now you have to clearly speak about your problem and actually be at peace with your Muslim brothers. You have to be at peace with your brothers. You don't just say salam and not mean it. Why do you say what you don't even do? You have to say peace and you have to mean peace. You have to mean it. And this is clarity in speech. We need this clarity in all of our relationships. Sometimes in marriage, this is difficult. Sometimes your wife said, does something, it really upsets you. Or you do something and it upsets the wife. And you stay upset for 30 years and you don't say anything. And you think this is called salah. <laughs> but eventually after 30 years, you explode. And she says, why are you going so crazy? I never put salt. Yes, I know for 30 years you didn't put salt. And I was being no, no, hold on a second. Hold on a second. You should have found a loving way to say it from the beginning so you could be clear. People cannot imagine what you think. People cannot imagine how you feel. You have to let them know. Especially in relationships with your parents, with your children, with your wife, with your friends, with your brother, with your sister, with your imam. If there's something in your heart, you should let them know. They need to know this is the, the transparency needs to exist in a relationship. Once again, sadeed is what fulfills a need, which covers the adab of speech, right? The way you speak should be fulfilling. It shouldn't be offensive, it shouldn't be angry. But at the same time, in the name of being respectful, sometimes we don't speak clearly. Or we just don't say anything. And that's what Allah is preventing in this one, one, one simple phrase. Ya ayyuhal ladina amal taqullaha wa qulu qawlan sadeed. so beautiful. So, so beautiful. And so one of the last meanings of the word sad, sad that I want to share with you is As-Saham Ida Staqama. You know from the famous poem, فَلَمْ نَسْتَدَّ سَعِدُهُ رَمَانِي Some say, فَلَمْ نَشْتَدَّ The Salah Al-Arab says, فَلَمْ نَسْتَدَّ سَعِدُهُ رَمَانِي When the arrow becomes perfectly straight, and that's what a lot of translations say, right? Speak straightforward speech. Straightforward speech. You know, there are people who can speak for 30 minutes and you have no idea what they say. No idea. I, I know this because I come from the United States. In the United States you have, you know, the, the, many years ago they had this Enron scandal. There was an organ, the executive co corporation, financial corporation, cheated millions of people out of millions and billions of dollars, right? And then they went to court. It wasn't Supreme Court. And they take the top executives and they ask them, well, did you order these papers signed or not? That's a simple question, and the answer should be yes or no. Simple question. And the guy speaks for 30 minutes. When I was in college, I used to do this, this, that. And he's talking, 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 talking. But there's no sadad in his tone. He should just be saying yes or no. But he goes all over the place. Except what he's supposed to talk about. And now time for now, we'll have court tomorrow. <laughs> That's what they do. Politicians do this during election seasons in the United States. You know, they'll just talk about, they won't talk about the question that was asked. They'll talk about the time when they were young and they were playing baseball all the time and they crack a joke or something. They won't deal with the issue itself. They won't speak directly. One time I was on a talk show with a Christian. He was a, he was a Catholic. And he had questions for me about Islam. So he had a chance to ask me two questions and I had a chance to ask him two questions. So when my turn came to ask him questions, because he's Catholic, he had one of those amulets of a saint. So I said, why do you have that on? And he told me, this is saint so-and-so, he protects me, he, you know, because I wear this, I don't get into car accidents, and I don't have this problem or that problem. I said, why do you need his protection when you don't, you, God's protection is not enough for you? Why do you need his protection? Then he says, well, you know what I really like? I really love Islamic architecture. <laughs> and I really love Spanish history. 
And I'm talking to and I was like, yeah, I love Islamic architecture too, but why are you wearing that amulet? And I really love Spanish history and the Muslims in Spain because I'm from Spain. I love Spanish history too, but why are you wearing the amulet? He would not come to the point. Why? Because they don't understand what Qawl Sadiq means. Did you know that when Islam spread, when Islam spread, and it went to you know, the, the, the Greeks, because the Greeks had philosophy. These are people of philosophy. And when you study philosophy, you go in every direction, except straight. And their criticism of Islam, the first criticism of the Quran they had was this book is too straight. It doesn't go in circles enough. <laughs> it's not complicated enough, it's too straightforward. That was actually a criticism they had because they enjoy complicated speech. This is what they enjoy. Allah says, Qulu qawla sadida. Speak straightforward. Get to the point. Don't dilly dally. This is something you want to say. Allah says it the way it is. He doesn't, you know, try to soften the blow. This is actually something that was found in the culture of the Arabs. Historically, the Arab people, they are a street, they say it like it is. This is different from the Desis. We never say it like it is. We say everything else. And we don't say it like it is. You have to learn to speak directly, clearly, exactly what's on your mind. You know, somebody comes to me, Ustad Naran, could you come to our masjid and give a lecture? I don't say, inshallah, yes, inshallah, one day. I know I can't. Why am I going to give him false hope? That's wrong. No, you shouldn't say, no, you would feel bad. No, brother, listen. I have a lot of obligations in I cannot. I wish your masjid all the best. I mean, God, for the Muslims there, I won't be able to come. Really, brother, please, 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 just say inshallah. No, I can't say inshallah, because that would give you hope. Right? I have no intention of coming. And if one day it happens, then I'll let you know. But for now, the answer is no. I don't want you to be confused. Because yeah, it's happened before. I used to feel bad, and I used to say inshallah. And then next thing I know, I find that they made a flyer and stuff, Allah is coming. He promised us. He promised us. Why? Because, you know, somebody says something, you understand it from a different way. It becomes a confirmation for you, and you run with it. This is a big, big problem in our society, all over the Muslim world. We don't speak clearly. We don't speak directly. And we have to learn to do this. This is the condition. Now the conclusion of Aqaba is what happens when you learn to speak directly, when you learn to fill in the gaps and make sure your speech is not going to cause problems, when do you speak, when you're supposed to speak, you say things that people need to hear, when you be become people of Qawla and Sadiqin, what happens? Allah says, Yuslih lakum a'malakum. He, Allah, will correct, He will fix all of your actions. Allah will fix all of your actions if you fix your speech. You fix your speech, Allah will fix your actions. What does that mean? That means that when we take an action, when we make an effort, the results are not in our hands. The results are always in Allah's hands. But if our actions are, are polluted with unclear speech, with dishonest speech, you know, with not well thought out speech, with unwise speech, then our actions will not produce the right results. Allah will not give them results, because the results do not come from us. The results only come from Allah. So He says, He will give you results if you learn to speak clearly. If you're not seeing the results of your efforts, maybe there's a problem in the way you communicate. Maybe there's, that's where the problem is. Because he says, He will correct for you your deeds. He will fix for you your deeds. The results of your deeds. And the things that you will do, now you will do them correctly. Because you know what human beings do. We take action based on what we hear and what communications happen. If the communication is clear, then the actions will be pure. If the communication is corrupted, then the actions will be corrupted. That's how it's going to be. He says, And he will forgive for you the shortcomings that you have. What a beautiful statement. SubhanAllah, the kalam of Allah, the hikmah, the wisdom in the kalam of Allah is unparalleled. He says, I'll forgive for you your sins. You know what that means? You will try your best to speak clearly but that does not mean you will speak perfectly every time. You will make mistakes when you speak. You will make mistakes in communication. But if you have the intention to constantly try to better the way you speak and act rightly accordingly, then even when you make a mistake, Allah will cover it up. 
Allah will fill the gaps. Nobody's going to turn into an angel overnight. It's not going to happen. We're still going to have problems, even in the way in which we speak. It's going to be difficult. But if we're making the effort to get better, يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبًا وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَالَزَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا And then this entire kalam, this gorgeous kalam concludes with whoever would obey Allah and His Messenger وسلم. This is important also because everything Allah mentions is for a reason. And if it's in an ayah, it's for a reason. Why does Allah mention the obedience to Allah and His Messenger وسلم, in the middle of this conversation? There are lots of aqwal you know, and the mufassireen. Lots of beautiful things have been said. I'll share one or two of them with you. One of them is that actually in this ayah, this is a command from Allah, yes? This is a command from Allah. But you will see the example of this command of Allah lived by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How do you speak clearly? How do you make sure you speak in a way that people hear what they need to hear? How do you make sure you think about what people are going to understand or misunderstand in the future? How do you make sure you speak exactly what needs to be said? How do you fulfill all of those conditions of speech? Every single time, that will be the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you want to obey this command of Allah, you better obey the legacy of your messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَن يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ and then this person has attained an enormous, incredible success. This is the greatest success you can have. Think about this, people. Allah Azza wa Jal wants the best for the human beings. Nobody cares more about us than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah gave us all these blessings. He gave us so many blessings in our life. He gave us health. He gave us money, he gave us clothes, he gave us family, he gave us this Islam, he gave us the masjid we're sitting in. He gave us the brotherhood that we enjoy towards each other. He gave us all of these things. But above all of these things, He gave us His own words. He gave us His own kalam. Ar-Rahman Allah al-Qur'an. He gave us the Qur'an. He gave us His own words. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And His word is the ultimate example of what is sadi, what is straightforward. And so, the greatest gift given to human beings is clear speech. His own speech. So you understand that when we speak, when we speak, that we have to live, live up to this great gift that Allah gave us. You know in Surah Al-Rahman, Allah even went as far as to say, Allamahu al-Bayan, He taught the human being speech. And Ibn Ashur in his commentary, in At-Tahrir wa he even said that Allah taught the human being speech so that one day he could learn the Qur'an. Like we didn't learn the Qur'an except for one day Allah was going to give His ultimate kalam to humanity. SubhanAllah. So that we have to respect this tongue that Allah has given us. We have to respect it. This is a big responsibility. This same tongue that recites the word of Allah should also be reciting the truth, speaking the truth. It should be speaking clearly. You know, how can you use the same tongue to recite Fatiha and the same tongue is used for lies and for cheating and for stealing? and for insulting people, or not speaking the truth. How can those two things exist at the same time? How can that happen? So we have to fix ourselves. We have to fix the way in which we communicate with each other. And Allah Azza wa Jal will take care of so many of our problems in our lives. You know, uh, last thing I'll tell you, we are the Ummah, that Allah calls us, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَلْطًا Right, He made us the balanced Ummah. The ummah that is the, the, very, it's defined by the very concept of balance. But before us, there used to be another ummah. And that ummah failed. They failed. And because they failed, they were replaced. And they were replaced by us. And one of the things Allah told them was, Speak to people in the most beautiful way. Speak to people in the most beautiful way. Allah told us, Speak to the, tell my slaves they should say what is better. You're in your head, there's a way to say things. Think in your head, there's a better way to say this. Allah equipped you with this beautiful mind, this incredible intellect, so you can come up with better ways of things, saying things. You can judge the intelligence of a person by the way they speak. You can judge the patience of a person by the way they speak. You can judge the measure and the character of a person by the way they carry themselves in their speech. Choose to say better things. Think through the words that you're going to use. Think through the criticism that you're going to make. 
Hey, are these words worth it? Will they do some khayy? Will good come from this? Or will only bad come from this? Am I only saying this because I will feel better? Or am I saying this because it will actually have some kind of benefit? May Allah Azza wa Jal make us an ummah of qawla and sadida. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless this ummah and create unity within this ummah. I make special dua as I'm, as I'm leaving you inshallah ta'ala tomorrow. I make special dua for the Muslims living in this part of the world, living in Dubai. May Allah Azza wa Jal keep the Muslims here safe and united and give barakah in their list and give them the ability to raise good, strong, healthy Muslims that can be a role model to the entire Ummah so they can show what the Muslims look, what a great Muslim society looks like, how they can navigate the best of both worlds, that they can get the best of their education in every field and at the same time carry the best values of the deen of Allah at the same time. May Allah Azza wa protect all of us and our families from the fitan, from the trials, from the difficulties and the challenges that surround us. And may Allah Azza wa make each other, us, a support for each other. Barakallahu li wa lakum fi al-Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum min ayat wa dhikr al-Hakim. Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala ibadihi al-ladhin as-taqa khususan ala abdalihim wa khatam al-nabiyyin Muhammadin al-Amin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in yaqul Allah azza wa jal fi kitabihi al-kareem ba'da an aqula a'udhu billahi min al-shaytan al-rajim إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله رحمكم الله اتقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا موقوتا